Hello and welcome to a concept ship buyer's guide for the Anvil Hurricane. The ship is on concept sale until the 6th of March 2017, coming with lifetime insurance and a pair of flare items during that time. It's available for $160 in a war bond version. War bonds are discounted prices for not using any store credit, or $175 if you want to use some or all store credit. Uh, all prices there are excluding tax. The loaner ship for the Hurricane is the F. 7CM Super Hornet. The Anvil A4A Hurricane is a two-seater older heavy fighter originating from the Second of Iron War. It is jam-packed with weapons. Two size four mounts for its nose. That is some big nose mounts for a dogfighter. Uh, four size three mounts for its top manned central turret and the uh, it's got two size three missile hardpoints as well and it comes with four size two missiles as well as six um, 11 series broadswords as standard. That's those um, those quite powerful um, cannons for ballistic purposes, all size three. Uh, it's 22 meters long and is slightly smaller than a standard F7C Hornet and a whole two meters smaller than a uh, Super Hornet. The ship is supposed to be a massive firepower death thing with low armor but high skill. It's somewhat of a glass cannon or a light armored mobile turret. You're going to have to try and avoid taking hits with this, especially if your shield is down. You don't have the armor to take those hits. The idea of the Hurricane is uh, supposed to be a tool for pilots who are excellent at drawing a bead on a target while maintaining the situational awareness to avoid enemy fire. But those that prefer a ship that can take a pounding um, may find themselves fodder to interceptors. The aggressively designed Hurricane offers dogfighting focused pilots a ship that relies strongly on firepower at the expense of armour. So when's the Hurricane going to be ready? The Hurricane is scheduled to become flight ready later this year because it's a smaller spacecraft uh, which uses the existing uh, anvil designs and aesthetics and dogfighting mechanics that have already been tested in Star Citizen's alpha tests. The A4A Hurricane is a fighting spacecraft that packs a deadly punch into a slight fuselage. The spacecraft compensates for its lack of creature comforts with its powerful armament, boasting six guns capable of blasting their way through nearly anything. The Hurricane's pilots um, haven't found a shield that they can't knock down yet. Be warned that this ship is not for beginners. Mastering her unique ratio of heavy weapons with little armour requires a particular mix of marksmanship and dogfighting. Naval pilots serving with Hurricane Squadrons have fallen in love with the exclusively offensive design. Their peers' constant refrain of are you having a little ship with your guns has served only to further distinguish the flights of six shooters. Standard model Hurricanes currently ship with six 11 series broadsword cannons, two gimbaled on the size four nose hardpoints, and four on the size three turret slots. The four FSKI ignite missiles for the size three missile bay hardpoints too. First bloodied against the Tavaran near the end of the second Tavaran war, the Anvil resurrected this classic hurricane design in response to increased vandal attacks in the late 29th century. The fighter serves with distinction in multiple branches of the UEE Navy and will become available for the civilian market in 2947, which is the in-law date now. Let's have a look at a bit of a comparison. I suspect most people will want to compare these to the Sabre and the Super Hornet. The Super Hornet is a brawler, able to take a beating both with its newer design, armour and shields. And oddly, in this comparison, is quite a balanced role. It's got a good amount of guns there as well on that Super Hornet. The Sabre, again, um, newer tech-wise, much less in the way of firepower, just four size threes. Um, it, it's meant to have above average speed and agility, but also has the element of lower emissions for quieter, evasive or stealthier roles. Um, it's not necessarily a shouting at you, I want to fight you. It's going to get itself into position before it engages. The Hurricane, conversely, has a lot more firepower than either, either of these ships, but is an older design. It has less armour, and it requires maybe two pilots, really, to be at full effect, to effectively use that gun turret. It's going to be a solid dogfighter, in fact. I would expect a, a balance... Um, 
from the Sabre, Super Hornet, and Hurricane, allowing all of these different playstyles to be effectively used in-game. Actually, saying that as well, the, the Vanguard is a heavy fighter too, really, um, and is only really the only other ship we can compare uh, the Hurricane to on the heavy fighter stage before that lightning is ready. It's much more tanky, the, the Vanguard, than any of the ships that we've mentioned, and it has a long range role as well. So these ships are, are very much for totally different play styles. So there's something for everyone here with all those ships. Now I'll go through a little tiny bit of an FAQ, um, just because people are asking questions already. Uh, the nose comes with uh, gimbaled size three weapons. It comes with those uh, series 11 um, uh, uh, weapons but you can change them for fixed size four weapons. You can change the configuration of missiles as well uh, from between six size ones and two size threes, uh, anywhere between that, uh, using those, um, those different mounts. The ship has a quantum drive and a jump drive as well, and no beds. Let's take a quick read of the Anvil Hurricane Barosha, uh, as it's very pretty and cool. Cass Aerospace originally built the Hurricane in 2607 for the UE Navy to use in the Second Tavaran War. The Tavaran Flanax Shield tech had proven so effective, the Navy needed a new weapon to try and penetrate their defences. Designed to capitalise on those critical moments when the Flanax Shields faltered, the Hurricane would unload all its available firepower as quickly as possible, built intentionally light with powered Focused on weapons and thrusters, any extra room aboard was dedicated to ammo storage. Unfortunately, by the time the Hurricane was deployed late in the war, it only saw limited action in battle, but left a lasting impression to those who flew it. You can see here the pilot's um, POV. Um, the point of view and the cockpit. Uh, besides its overpowering offensive capabilities, one of the Hurricane's most distinguishing features is the pilot entry method. The pilot seat deploys from the ship's belly, allowing expedited takeoff procedures when precious seconds count. Supposedly, Anvil used the Hurricane's entry method as inspiration for the Gladiator, so when the Anvil won the UEE Navy contract to remake the Hurricane, they upgraded the seat's hydraulic lift to match. Though built for the Second Tavaran War, the Hurricane saw limited action late in the conflict and the ship was subsequently decommissioned. However, following a 2871 report that showed the longer a human pilot engaged a Vandal ship, the less likely they were to survive, the ship's focused firepower design, clearly seen in the top-down view here, was resurrected by the Navy. It looks pretty cool. I really like the design, actually. In here, we see some stats with the field book. We can see the, uh, the size 4 uh, mounts. Um, currently having size three guns there for the nose. We can see that beautiful looking turret there, and we can see the full design, those uh, thrusters at the back there. Don't know exactly how fast this ship's going to be. We need to see it in game, I suppose, and balanced before we'll actually know. It suggests that it's not that slow, which is good, um, as it's putting most of its power to weapons uh, and then thrusters um, before anything else, it seems. Obviously, ammo storage, um, especially if you're going for a ballistic loadout like these ships seem to be as default. 27th century UEE Navy Rear Admiral Denzel Zimmerman famously described the Hurricane as a mobile turret. Every last centimetre of the ship, from its nose-mounted guns to its unique quad turret design, was crafted to make it as offensively devastating as possible. Since that configuration comes at the cost of defence measures, the ship was given a slimmer profile to make it more difficult to hit. Anvil Aerospace's resurrection of the Hurricane was an immediate success for the Navy. Within the first week of deployment, the Caliban system in 2878 Hurricane pilots and gunners scored an impressive number of confirmed kills. In 2884, witnesses to the fall of Caliban claimed the Hurricane played an instrumental role clearing the path to jump points for the evacuation of civilians. Thanks to its enduring speed and devastating arsenal, the Hurricanes have become an instrumental part of the UEE Marine Expeditionary Brigades, where pilots rely on hard-hitting tactics to clear the way for planetary assault ground forces. There's some pretty cool um, colour schemes here. So even cooler colour schemes here. That one's cool. Argyll Dawn came to prominence after a, a number of daring raids against supply ships designated for La Lago Nexus system. At carefully selected spots, hurricanes would ambush a convoy and eliminate support ships before they could retaliate. Argyll Dawn's ruthless effectiveness prompted the advocacy to conduct a number of high-risk raids of their Echo 11 headquarters. Woo! Reference to Echo 11. Hurricanes played an influential part in the 
Ottoni Syndicate's infamous 2941 heist of precious ores destined for Arc Corp. Following an EMP blast, the ship's expertly focused firepower quickly crippled the light shielded haulers, rendering them immobile and ready for boarding. The economic impact on Arc Corp caused a ripple effect that was felt across the Empire. And that's kind of it, really. There are two other discounted packages available uh, with the Hurricane Inn during that concept sale, so, and all sh ships that have a Hurricane in a package during that time will have lifetime insurance too. The Hammer Pack includes a Carrack, a Crucible, um, a Super Hornet, a Gladiator, a Terrapin, and a Hurricane. Uh, and the Tortoise and the Hurricane Pack contains a Hurricane and a Terrapin. You don't need to purchase any of these ships um, to, to play the game. All you need is a Star Citizen game package, and um, which is around $45, comes with a ship, and all these other ships are obtainable in-game without further purchase necessary. If you are buying for pay-to-win reasons, you are going to be disappointed, so bear that in mind. I actually really quite like the design of this ship. I love the fact that it's a heavy fighter. We needed a heavy fighter. It's gun-centric, and if you're after a tankier heavy fighter, there's always the Vanguard, I suppose, and eventually we'll be able to get the Lightning in-game, um, which is the F8. Um, so we'll have to wait and see exactly how that all pans out. I'm excited to see how this um, pairs up against the other dogfighters. If you like big guns, though, you might want to give the Hurricane a look. Please tell me what you think about the hur Hurricane. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you have cuts? questions about it. Um, do, you, do you want to trade in your Buccaneer or Suborn or Sabre or Vanguard for one? Have you got any more questions about the ship? We're going to revisit the ship on Friday uh, with a mixture of CIG's official questions and answers about the ship uh, and anything else that I can answer as well that gets asked repeatedly or regularly or is a good question to ask. Uh, an article as well with all the links and more info is available in the description below, so check that out. Remember, commenting on any of my Star Citizen videos each month gives you a chance to win a ship for February. That's an Avenger Titan. Please like and subscribe, as it really does help me, and I will see you in the verse.